Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Property News Show. It's just Mark and I today and we're going to be discussing for the next 10 or 15 minutes or so the major um, manifesto promises for both Conservative and Labour as it relates to landlords and investors. Please remember to like and subscribe. We always enjoy reading your comments. Let's get to the show. So Mark, do you want to kick us off? There's a surprising amount of similarities between the two. You know, you hear lots of different, lots of very drastic discourse, but walk us through the similarities that we've got between the two parties here. Okay, so they're both proposing to ban the, or, or to repeal the Section 21, which is the ability for a landlord to evict a tenant uh, just because they want to. Uh, I'm not wholly against that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you know most landlords will have an issue. Certainly, if you're doing this long term, um, you want good tenants to stay. Yeah. Um, the issue comes in the, the section eight, which is the uh, provision within the legislation mm -hmm. that you would use to remove the tenant for non-payment. Doesn't have enough teeth, and there are too many exit routes mm -hmm. for tenants to claim, you know, various other things when. The crux of the matter is they're not paying their rent yeah. or they're misusing the property. And so that, landlords then mm. typically revert to the Section 21 just to, to um, you know, force the eviction quicker. Um, so what they're saying is both parties are saying they're going to repeal the 21. Uh, so that stops the no-fault evictions mm -hmm. uh, or revenge evictions. Um, and uh, But the Conservatives specifically say they're going to beef up the Section mm. 8 or, or at least landlord's ability to um, evict tenants that yeah. are non-paying or, or you know in arrears or, or are maybe misusing the property or, yeah. or are breaching the tenancy agreement in some way so I you know we'd support that as long yeah. as the, the section 8 or the ability to, to remove them for breaching the tenancy agreement well, strong. is properly beefed up. In well strong. that's obviously where we've seen yeah. issues in the past where you have you know maybe first-time landlords, yeah. accidental landlords and then they get a house and they get someone in there that doesn't pay rent for a year. Yeah. They haven't found a way to get rid of them. That's why we had, you know, Section 21, take away that, but there's got to be a good replacement for it. Yeah. Cool. What else have we got that's similar between the two? Okay, so they're both talking about increasing the stamp duty for foreign investors by 3% on the existing 3% surcharge. That's my understanding. Uh, although it is generic at the moment, you're not the light, they release this stuff, but mm -hmm. don't tell you the detail until later. Um, do I have an issue with that? Well, it'll probably gum the market up a little bit. There'll be less foreign buyers, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's probably not what we need right now. So mm -hmm. yeah, I see that as a, a minor negative. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the other similarities are the leasehold, the reform of leasehold. Mm -hmm. um, they're banning leasehold houses. The Conservatives issued a consultation. The consultation responses came back they have already responded saying that they're going to ban leasehold houses okay. and set the ground rents on flats at zero or a peppercorn. peppercorn. Um, both of them say they're going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some pretty outrageous uh, abuses. We uh, talked about that in one of our previous are, shows, yeah, didn't we? And there's been so some, a lot of noise around it. Yeah, so pretty similar, those two. Um, both of them say they're going to build uh, thousands of new homes. Hundreds of thousands of new yeah, homes, as they thousands. always say. Yeah, I don't be believe the Conservatives at all. I don't mm. think they will. Uh, I don't think it's really, uh, you know, they, they, they believe in this sort of freewheeling yeah. uh, e economy. And, and, you know, that that isn't necessarily within their DNA. Um, so I think it will just sort of carry on as mm -hmm. it is. Labour pr probably will uh, put a load of money behind building a load of houses. Um, whether that works or not, um, who knows? Probably not great for landlords. That uh, ties in with their new uh, sovereign land trust, yes. where they're going to be able to buy land cheaper and force developers uh, to use it or lose it with extra taxes. Well, that's compulsory purchase order, and and it's back to this requisitioning and mm -hmm. stealing, um, you know, assets from private companies and individuals, mm -hmm. uh, just because they think that's the right thing to do, and. You know, this goes back to um, Karl Marx, uh, communism, um, yep. all the things that um, Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell seem to mm. uh, so hold so close to their heart. Um, you know, Chairman Mao's Little Red Book um, <laughs> isn't really relevant for 2019, no. in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. Um, and lastly, we've got that they, um, they're they both looking to improve the quality of social housing and um, create more carbon-friendly homes as well. Do you think that's going to have any effect on, on landlords or investors? 
depends how many they build, uh, or it depends how strict the rules are, and how mm. you know if, if all new homes need to be carbon zero, as Labour is saying. Uh, yeah, it'll put the costs up a bit. Um, will people be able to um, borrow enough to buy a new home? Probably, uh, yeah. because it pro you know there is already lots of carbon neutral homes that have mm. been created. Um, so I suspect it, it won't have a massive effect. They're also talking about some retrospective changes to bring older mm -hmm. homes up to these levels. If there's something to help landlords and individuals yeah. do that, fine. If they're suddenly going to say EPCs all need to be A or above, there's uh, no then there's no support. Um, yeah, then they're going to have a massive drought of rental property and it's not going to work, so I don't think they'll do it. Yeah, and we obviously don't have the... Um, As uh, usual, detail. Of, yeah, and we don't have yeah. the amount of... Uh, you know, social housing to fill that gap if the rental market was to dry no. at the moment, do we? No. And it's, you know, despite the pledge, it takes years to build that number of houses. Of course to fill it does. That yeah. Okay. Um, so the key differences then. So yeah. surprising amount in common, despite the, you know, um, discourse we have at the moment. The rhetoric. Yeah. Um, but um, we do have some big differences between them. So do you want to run us through those as well? Yeah. So um, one of the biggest differences is that Labour say they are going to introduce rent controls. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, again, not much detail. I think they're talking about a Berlin model yeah. uh, whereby they give cities the ability on an individual basis mm -hmm. to say rents have gone up X amount. Yeah. We need to cap them, you know, to inflation or, or whatever. Um, that wouldn't, you know, if, if it's done on a city by city basis, a lot mm -hmm. of cities won't want to cap them because they know it will severely restrict the supply of, of rental property. Yeah. Um, so it's probably not quite as draconian mm -hmm. as, as some may see it, but still negative. Uh, very big difference between Labour and the Conservatives uh, and not a good thing for landlords. The result will be uh, a severe uh, reduction in the supply of rental property. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, the standards of rental property will drop uh, and a lot less landlords will want to uh, rent yeah, to, exactly, to yeah. private tenants. So therefore, uh, the labour market will uh, become less dynamic Mm. Uh, and the economy will suffer. So it's not going to work long term. Uh, it's no. a little bit like Section 24, uh, as we've seen the results, uh, <laughs> uh, as we've previously discussed. So what else we've got? Um, one of the main ones I saw was that um, Conservative have pledged to keep the right to buy um, yeah. for council homes, whereas at Labour are going to abolish that completely so that we maintain and grow a stock of yeah. um, so social housing. What do you think about that? Very, very bad. Um, you know, forget my sort of selfish interest as a mm. landlord. Um, you know, it might be better if, ten if uh, tenants didn't uh, purchase their, their rental properties mm. uh, because I might have more tenants to rent to. Uh, but the reality is Margaret Thatcher introduced that very successful policy in the 80s. Uh, I think it, you know, encourage it gets people on the ladder, it encourages tenants to then buy. Mm -hmm. they, they own their own home, they have sort of more, um, you know, self-determination and yep. the ability to... Uh, plot their future, um, you know, it's aspirational. I think it's very, very positive. And, mm. you know, if they're paid in for all these years, why not, you know, g g get them into uh, a bit of home ownership and, mm. and g g get, get some capital behind them? It's kind of the, the um, opposite of what you think Labour would be pushing for, really. Well, I don't know. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn and, and John McDonnell clearly interested in. Um, you know, socialism the extreme, whereby the state it's owns everything. Yeah. The, the individual doesn't have the access and doesn't mm -hmm. have own much capital, uh, and therefore the state just rents everything and, and controls everything. Mm -hmm. So I can see why they would ideologically go down this road, uh, but I, I think it's very bad for people, you know, at the lower end of the, mm. the spectrum. Well, um, that might so be their only route to get on, yeah. you know, on the housing yeah. ladder. I, I think it's that. outrageous. Yeah, okay. and, 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 and all you're doing is teaching people how to stay mm. in that rut. You're not yeah. then uh, sort of giving them some uh, the ability to step up and, and advance in terms of their financial literacy, which is a big negative. Mm. So um, we talk us through a little bit. The, um, so the Conservatives have the Affordable Homes Programme, um, which they're looking to maintain, and Labour are going to scrap that and tie it to local incomes um, as they claim... Uh, Conservatives' bogus definition of affordable is as high as 80% of market rents. you want to talk through that a little bit? Yeah, so I think this is social housing. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, Labour are trying to reduce um, the rents in the social housing sector. Yeah. Conservatives have sort of said, well, it's going to be 80% of private. 
Um, housing associations have been doing quite well. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are awash with cash. Uh, looks to me like Labour are going to reduce their incomes mm. significantly. Uh, they're probably not going to be particularly happy about that, but I, I suspect Labour want to bring this ownership under council and, and central government control anyway, mm. rather than having all these housing associations um, having quite so much control. I think Labour want to control this centrally. So uh, you can see they'll want to diminish them and, and, mm. and get votes by telling social housing tenants that their rents are and going to reduce or, or not go up as much. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here we have um, the uh, Conservatives are not going to grant um, benefits, including housing benefits, to any non-UK residents for the first five years. From the EU. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so so it, uh, it will go towards, uh, once we leave the EU, it will be anyone outside of the UK won't get benefits yeah. for the first five years. So that would affect, obviously, anyone who's on housing benefit who is paying for renting yeah. in the UK. Do you see that as having a negative um, impact on the market? I I'm not sure it's going to make that much difference because... Um, most private landlords will not take LHA tenants now. Uh, the Conservatives have smashed it to pieces by reducing LHA. Obviously, direct payment mm. got taken away a few years ago. Um, so private landlords don't want LHA tenants. Do you so think it's surprising that the uh, Conservatives aren't having bringing back their direct tenant because that seems sorry direct payment to landlords. No, that, that seems like it would you know stimulate that and you know push more people out of social housing into private, which would be on board with what the um, Conservatives are looking to do. Yeah, um, although I, I know a, a sort of central Conservative policy has been to um, promote and encourage financial literacy and mm -hmm. encourage people to um, take control of, of their yeah. own finances. Um, and they've done that by partially by saying, OK, we pay all the benefits to you yeah. and then you make the payments to the landlord and every, mm -hmm. everything else because you, therefore you become, they're encouraging the uh, benefit claimant to become yeah. more financially responsible. Um, and that's been their sort of methodology all the way through. So mm -hmm. um, you can understand why the Conservatives might not want to do that. If you're a landlord and you want to be taking LHA tenants, clearly Labour look like they're going to be a lot better the, mm -hmm. than the Conservatives um, in that sense because uh, they're going to be paying you direct. So yes, inevitably, I think landlords will, will want to take mm. benefit tenants again if they're getting direct payment. Yeah. And also, the Labour are talking about increasing LHA significantly, as they did under the previous mm. Labour administration. Um, so, yeah, it'll probably become quite attractive again. It'll take a hell of a lot for me to transfer and go down that road course, because yeah. um, just because of the you know the, the quality that the properties. Often, mm -hmm. you know, we, we had several hundred on LHA, yeah. and in, invariably the, the properties come back in a very bad condition, so you spend thousands getting them back yeah. to standard again. Okay, um, so we've got a couple more. Um, so one here is that uh, Labour's going to end the conversion of office buildings into homes, yeah. which is described as an abuse of the permitted development yours. So they're not looking at getting rid of permitted development, but stop. I think what they're referring to is, you know, again, as we talked about a bit, people converting... Um, you know, out of town office buildings and stuff into into homes yeah. that are really of low quality. Yeah. What, do you think that's a good thing, bad thing? Um, of course, from my selfish developer um, with with that hat on, mm -hmm. um, I I wouldn't uh, want that. What they're saying is, if you've got an office building and you want to convert it into uh, apartments, um, then you're going to need to apply for planning permission rather than have the automatic right to do it yeah. using the permitted development route. Um, Yes, there have been some abuses. Yes, the unit sizes have maybe got a bit small mm -hmm. um, and the quality and amenity um, standards or amenity, general amenity to the occupants mm -hmm. is, is not particularly good, including light in some of these blocks. So I think maybe they need to deal with that within the permitted development regime. So increasing the standards rather than just... Yeah, just say there's a minimum together. size standard of 30 metres squared or, or 40 metres squared. Mm -hmm. There needs to be, um, you know, it needs to meet the... the re there are some standards of, yeah. of light. Access um, to amenities which, and yeah, stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, amenity standards in, in terms of, um, you know, wh what's the outlook, you know, how much light's coming in, you know, ventilation, all that sort of stuff, which yeah. a lot of the time can be dealt with through the building regulations process, mm. but um, maybe they need to deal with it like that. It's but clearly, one problem there, you think? Yeah, well, clearly Labour um, have uh, feel like they're going to get some votes out of this because mm -hmm. there's been um, some 
a few blocks with very yeah. very small. Yeah, units and I think there's been. Yeah. Um, I think there was a Channel Four documentary, and that they showed, you know, these out of town office blocks that were being used as temporary housing. Yeah. You know, so they're low quality. Them, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, um, another Labour one is um, landlords are no longer going to be responsible for checking the immigration status of um, uh, people who they're renting to. So that's something that under the Conservative government has been the responsibility yeah. of landlords and they can be liable for that. Uh, Labour is suggesting that gets moved up to the council um, and it would be their responsibility to check those people yeah. and landlords would no longer be penalised or expected to act. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that one? That's actually a good one for, yeah, for landlords. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. We're, we're not border force. No, of course. Um, and when they introduced it, um, making landlords responsible for effectively... A, acting as an immigration officer mm. um, before renting a property to an individual, I, it, it just seemed bizarre to me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they've just piled more and more red tape on and, um, mm. yeah, surely they should be removing some. They should be forced to remove some red tape when they decide to introduce some. Should be a maximum yeah. amount of red tape. Well, <laughs> if, they want, if they want rental property, if they want to supply, a good yeah. supply of private rented properties as they do, mm. and they don't want rents to keep piling up as they are at the they moment. They need to make it easy. They need to make it slightly incentivize easier. Incentivise the landlord. Yeah, incentivise the landlord. Okay, so kind of mixed bag. Yeah. Some good and bad from both, which yeah. is surprising. Um, so could you just give me your single best and single worst um, policy from the uh, Conservative manifesto? Yeah, so I think one of the best things in the Conservative manifesto is forcing local councils to use developer contributions like the 106, mm -hmm. like SIL, uh, and, and perhaps commuted sums for affordable housing, using that to build more houses yep. locally and to put it into infrastructure, I think that's great, rather than councils being able to just use it within their revenue mm -hmm. and, and just to, I don't know, finance the bins or whatever, yep. because they haven't got enough revenue from elsewhere. I think that's great. Um, and the single worst thing from the Conservative Manifesto for um, landlords and investors? Well. Removing the 21, removing the section 21. I don't think that's good, but of course that's continued. That's dependent mm. on the what what they can do with the section eight. So okay. if landlords still have the ability to evict yeah. um, for non-payment or being in arrears or, or not treating the property properly, uh, then fine. Okay, and and same again for the Labour manifesto. Single best and single worst policy. Single worst is rent controls. Mm -hmm. uh, not going to work. Uh, going to re reduce the supply of rented property yep. and the quality it's significantly. Uh, and I suppose the best one uh, looks like they're going to reinvigorate LHA, um, bring you know, bring direct payment back, mm. which which is clearly great for landlords. And, mm. and landlords will become interested in renting to um, LHA tenants again. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Were you surprised to see some of those things on the Labour manifesto? Yeah. Compared to the rhetoric. I was, yeah. yeah. I don't and trust them, though. No, of course. Uh, I, 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 think, I think behind this, there's a whole Marxist um, sort of um, ide ideology which is going to permeate mm. through, you know, th th this is stage one, and then I think you get into years two, three, mm. four, five, and then I think they'll be bringing all sorts of nonsense through, which is going to disastrously affect the economy. Not This is a tiny little bit mm -hmm. of it, um, and, it, and it's, it's going to impact on business, and then eventually, of course, inevitably the uh, the people at the lowest end are, are going to suffer mm. the most and with the conservatives um you know with a right wing swing to the party over the last years do you think there'd be more support for, for landlords and investors which are traditionally uh you know someone they'd play to no i did I, I didn't think there would be because the conservatives have um in many ways turned their back on the landlord and free enterprise um you know Certainly since, I don't know, 2015, mm -hmm. since they started this march, I think they're going for votes. Um, and, um, you know, all, all we've seen really have been, has been more and more negative legislation mm. from the Conservatives. They're just not as bad as Labour. So it's so, a um, best of both worlds for you then. You know, you've got a well, it's, it, 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 lesser it's, of two it's, evils. Yeah, it's the lesser of two evils. Yeah. Okay. Any final words? Uh, any final words? Yeah, I think it's clear that, um, you know, yeah, I think it's clear that there aren't any, uh, that there isn't a, a sort of an amazing shining beacon of, of a, a, a prime minister mm. or, or party that we necessarily would want to go for, but there's an absolutely glaringly obvious worst case, which mm -hmm. looks to me like Labour. Um, Lib Dems at the moment, it doesn't look like they've got too many disastrous uh, policies in their manifesto. Um, Farage, 
you know, I, I didn't vote for Brexit. Uh, I don't think a no deal Brexit would be good. Um, I think we should go with Boris's deal um, just to get it done mm -hmm. um, because I, I think the uncertainty is the worst bit. Um, but uh, I, I, I suspect any of those would be better than Labour. Okay. Thanks again for watching our special edition of the Property News Show. Lots of interesting and divisive things to talk about in the run up to the general election. Mark has a lot of opinions as you can think. If you want to have a chat with us, you leave a comment or question below. We love hearing them and we'll get back to you. Please remember to like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on another one of these. See you again next time.